Hello, everyone. It was hard to get back here. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming today. We're all settled down now? Yeah, great. A um, couple of rules. We don't allow photography and we don't allow videotaping. And I see you people up there with those cameras. <laughs> um, we have uh, someone very important that we need to thank today. Um, this is our sponsor. She has been very generous to the Bach and as well as her late husband, Dave, every time she sponsors a concert, she does it in his memory. Very, very beloved and such a great supporter, both of them. Um, please give a big giant hand to Barb Carlin. She's sitting back there in the bar. We miss Dave so much. <laughs> and uh, she's brought like 20 people, so that's, that's really great, yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna just get right to it here. The band is right in the back here, so please welcome up to the stage the Roger Glenn. Beware the vibes of March. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm, if I look like I'm walking like a drunken sailor, it's because I'm not a drunken sailor. <laughs> but I'm coming down with a deep case of vertigo. And so it's like. Man, so sympathetic. Oh. Right, that's enough. <laughs> I don't want your pity. <laughs> But anyway, I hope we have a great afternoon for you. We have assembled some great vibes and stuff. So you, you've heard enough of my voice. Let's we start playing some music. Yeah. I'm going to introduce the members of the band and, and everyone, and we'll go from there. on piano. Glenn just won a Grammy on the Count Basie Orchestra. My man, 
You didn't think I was gonna bring some street musicians, did you? <laughs> Although some street musicians can kick butt. <laughs> on bass, he and I won a Grammy with Cal Jader on an album called La Onda Va Bien. Mr. Rob Fisher, give him a little of that, Rob. say this one time, well, maybe two times. Do you know what month this is? Just saying March, right? <laughs> this is International Women's Month. And I'm happy to say that not only do we have a great percussionist with us, but we also have a female vibist with us. Now the point I'm trying to make about all this is that hopefully this is the last time somebody has to say we have a woman in this band as opposed to just saying, here's a member of the band because, you know, it's, we're at the growing stage, you know. We gotta, we gotta get you guys up to speed to realize that women and men can all do the same thing. So, so hopefully as time marches on, it is not an issue. It is not a black issue, it's not a white issue, it's not an Asian issue, it's not just a human being up here playing for other human beings, not unless there's some aliens around here. <laughs> Put your hands together for the one and only Michelle Garlic. <laughs> Give her a little Latin six eight. Yeah. running feud, you see. He is a retired Marine Corps member, and I am a Army veteran. So this is the Marines versus the Army. <laughs> Say what? No. <laughs> Put your hands together for the one and only Chief Gunny, Mr. Leon Joyce Jr. Let him have it, let him have it. One, two, oh, one, two, hit it!
We've reached the objective now. Thank you. <laughs> Leon Joyce Jr. Well, what is this all about? This is about bringing in vibes, vibrato vibes, the vibes of March. So we have some vibe players here. First one I want to bring on to have him play a little on this number is the one and only who I've known for a long while. He had a band called the it was a thing on Cal Jada, it was the Radcliffe band, I believe it was, John, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, how about a round of applause for Mr. John Erickson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> together which ones he wants to play, you know. Soul sauce, whatever. Wait, you want to do that? Oh, oh, the band was called Soul Sauce. John Erickson. That's enough. Steal my gig. <laughs> That's enough. You can go sit down now. Go, go sit down. We'll call you up later. Go sit down. Go sit down. Jesus. <laughs> There's always one in the crowd, you know. <laughs> I have been working, as you know, I've been doing this thing for a number of years, and every time I wanted to have a woman on this show, and I don't know what it was. Am I? I'll use the Harry Bella, Belafonte song. I wonder why nobody don't like me. Is it the fact that I'm ugly? I call these ladies and says, oh no, he's too ugly. I can't do that. Oh no, he can't be so ugly. So, but fortunately, I found a vibus. And it's very important it is very important that this is being live streamed. It's very important that young ladies, old women, whatever who play vibes, to get in touch with me. Just remember Roger Glenn Jazz, and that, that'll take you to my website. You can leave a message and all that. It has been very difficult, but fortunately, fortunately, I now have a female virus in the ensemble to play with us. So will you please, please welcome with a round of applause the one and only. <laughs> Man, I'm going blind. Susan Pascal. Susan Pascal. From Seattle, Washington, Seattle, Washington, Susan Pascal. Thank you. 
slave ship captain who um, saw the light and changed his way and so um, he created this song allegedly it's based off the melodies that he heard the slaves singing on the uh, voyage to the Americas and it was a pentatonic type of song that is indigenous of, a lot of some African cultures and so it makes sense that you know that's what he heard you know, you listen to the words, Amazing Grace, how sweet it was. I once was lost, but now I'm slave. I'm saved. You know, he was a slave ship captain and said, saw the light and said, I don't want to do this anymore. So, but the thing, the, the important thing of this is in regards to this music 
and our music of the Americas is it a combination initially of music from Europe and mu music from Africa and how the two of those things come together and it creates the music that we have today. So I'll be talking more about that, but I just want to give you a little history of they brought the xylophone over there and then from, a, from this pentatonic scale, the Europeans introduced a chromatic scale. So that's what we have in regards to the first type of instrument was the xylophone, which had wood in, in Latin, xylo means wood. So, or the marimbas, it was wooden, wooden bars as opposed to uh, what we have is uh, a metal bars here. And so this has, a, it's called a vibraphone because it creates a vibrato. So that's why it's called a vibraphone. Step beyond that, what John likes to play every now and then is an electronic type of, uh, what is it called? Mallet cat. Mal Mallet cat. Mallet cat, which goes into, you know, it is basically electronic in which he can make it sound not just like vibes or marimbas, he can make it sound like uh, accordion or you know, anything, you know. It's drums, you know, it is just a trigger to play whatever, when it triggers the electronics of it, you can create whatever. So that's a little history of the vibes. And actually, the bilophone, to show the world thing, when I was in Vietnam, I saw an instrument that was made out of bamboo and another one that was made with metal. And apparently, from the, uh, the trade that went on between Asia and Europe and you know the, the silk, silk route, they brought that instrument also to Africa. So from there, you know, it, it's, it's humankind of how, how people have, have created music and, and what people in various cultures have done with that music. You know, the vibes is, is a 20th century instrument because it involves a motor and, and all that. But the history, the lineage, it just shows what humankind has created throughout the centuries. Enough of me. John, what are you going to be doing? This is a song by Mike Maneri, uh, one of my favorite vibes. He is the... Uh, the leader and the founder of the Steps Ahead Band. You probably have heard of Steps Ahead Band, Michael Brecker and uh, all the rest of the good guys. Uh, this is called Self Portrait.
John Erickson, ladies and gentlemen, John Erickson. Our next Fibus is Susan Pascal. I hope you enjoy Susan. Can you say a few words? You can say as many words as you want. <laughs> Look out. Make him, so, make him pass the, bill. <laughs> <laughs> the main thing I wanted to say is how happy and thrilled I am to be here at the Bach, which I'd heard about, and I'm here, and I'm seeing what a great place it is, what an incredible, unbelievable setting it is, and meeting these great musicians, wonderful players, all, and it's really a treat for me. So I thank you for, again, for Roger, for the invitation to come down and to the club for supporting this really fun event. Plus, Friday was my birthday, International Women's Day. <laughs> and Did you enjoy the carrot cake? Yes, I was just gonna say, <laughs> Beth made me a carrot cake, it was my favorite. And so it's some downstairs if you want any. We got some. <laughs> Anyway, the take tune. A take a number. Take it Yeah, it's pretty delectable. Um, the tune we're going to play for you is, is one of my favorites, uh, done by Gary Burton, the renowned vibraphone virtuoso. Hey, yeah. So I won't be a renowned vibraphone virtuoso, but I will play for you the Jobim tune, O Grand Amour.
excellent taste. Thank you, Susan. Beautiful. Our next vibus, who has been with us previously, a very talented young man. I can say young because I'm old. So you think. <laughs> Put your hands together for the one and only Mr. Dylan Vado. <laughs> I'm getting like I'm getting like Trump and Biden. I'm becoming senile. <laughs> Although Biden did give a heck of a speech, you know. <laughs> Just saying, I, you know, there may be some Republicans in here and you know, well, you know. Gotta give guy credit. He got up there and said what he had to say, you know. Still got it in him. <laughs> Vado, you want to tell us what this is all about? First of all, uh, I'm just so grateful to be here. Thank you, Roger, for putting this together. How about a hand? <laughs> a hand. Um, 
And one more time, a hand for this great band, this fantastic band. Pleasure to play with you all. Um, yeah, also, uh, not, not dissimilar to Susan, I'm going to play a song that I first heard um, by Bobby Hutcherson. It's not his tune, but, um, it was, you know, this is just such a, like, bouncy and fun, catchy tune. It's actually by the great Ornette Coleman, and this is a song called Una Muy Bonita. And, um, but I, I first heard it on this record that's called Stick Up, uh, Bobby Hutcherson record, it's fantastic. And, um, and they, they take a little more of like a, a even groovier approach than the, than the original, if that's even possible. They got Billy Higgins swinging on the drums and doing everything. But I just love this tune, it gets stuck in my head all the time. So I wanted to share it with y'all. So this is Una Muy Bonita. I wanted to tell him also that um, this composition, the, um, what's the name, who composed it? See, my senility is coming in. Arnett Coleman. Arnett Coleman. When I was a kid, and there was an opportunity for me to, to go visit a Nike base if I got enough customers on my paper route when I was a kid <laughs> in Englewood, New Jersey. And who do you think was on my list of people who I had to drop papers off with, Ornette Coleman in, in Englewood, New Jersey. And, you know, when the month is over, I have to come up there, you know, to get the money from them, you know, to, you know, musicians, you know, I'm up early to do this, to get this money, and he comes out in a, in a robe, you know, his hair looking like a, trying to reach Mars. And I said, hi, Mr. Coleman, I'm here to collect the money for the, for the paper. He said, okay, Sonny, uh, you know, he'll open his eyes and gives me some change and went on. But that was Arnett. I just wanted to let you know. He helped me go to see what a Nike missile base was like as a kid. So with that, as adults, I present you with the one and only.
Votto, ladies and gentlemen. Dylan Votto. Take a bow, villain. Dylan, take a bow. Are you all having fun yet? Oh, good, good. Well, I guess uh, the next person, uh, what is his name? Uh, Ro Ro Roger Glean Glenn. <laughs> You've heard a very variety of songs. Uh, there's a song I'm going to do. This song is called, the name of the song is called Congo Square. Has anybody ever been to New Orleans? Yeah. Have you been to Congo Square? Do you know about Congo Square? No, some say yes, some say no. Congo Square, when you go to New Orleans, you look for it, ask for it, you know, go there. Congo Square was a place where the slaves were able to play their drums on a Sunday. And because of that, they would, you know, get together and dance and stuff like that. And so that was the, sort of the start in this country of this, this thing, this cultures from Europe and this cultures from Africa that evolved out of, out of New Orleans in the area. And then later on, you know, there were these bands and stuff like that, uh, European instruments, trumpet, for example. And, you know, one of the f famous trumpet players to come as a result of that was who my father used to work with, Mr. Louis Armstrong. And um, yeah, they even they recorded a number which is heard all over the world. Uh, they recorded a song called um, "What Is the Name of That Song?" <laughs> <laughs> what a wonderful world! <laughs> I have had COVID one time, and it's also created a brain fog. So I'm sorry, folks. Anyway. Um, I composed this number, it's, it's called Congo Square, and the main emphasis of this number was to, sh to show how European classical music and African classical rhythms and music come together in regards to uh, the culture here in the United States and uh, how that came together and what it, what it created for the rest of for the rest of our music, and you know, this is this has been s simulated in all of the Americas in various ways. What is interesting is, like in Brazil, the combination of European and African is the majority of the slaves that came from Africa from a different part of Africa. So it's just like in Europe, you know, when I when I talk about Britain, when I talk about German music, when I talk about French music, you have a sensibility of what that mainly sounds like. But what a lot of people don't realize is also that there's that difference that happens in African cultures, uh, you know, from Congo to Senegalese to uh, Nigerian and so they create other sounds. And so the majority of slaves that went to Brazil and South America were mainly from Angola, where a lot of slaves in, the, in northern uh, North America were coming from Nigeria and Senegal. So they create their own music mixed with different cultures that come into play, you know, like in, they're dealing with right now in, um, um, uh, French culture was involved in regards to uh, Haiti, Haitian music. So it has that combination of Haiti, French, and, and African sensibilities coming together. Cuba, Spain, and uh, African uh, cultures. So all of these things mix in, you know, and I've, this song is on a composition, on, is a composition on a CD that will be coming out shortly called uh, My Latin Heart, and this is one of the songs that I composed for this. I hope you enjoy it. It's called Congo Square. We start off with the classical input. Maestro, please. <laughs>
that's the European side. Here is the African side.
Square, Congo Square. If I can have the sound man come and join me right now, we're going to uh, bring on El Maestro on the phone to have a little conversation with us, Mr. Terry Gibbs. So let me, let me uh, call him. Where's the sound man? Are you there? Okay. Just give us a moment. Terry's going to be, what is it, 99 right now? Terry, are you there? What are you doing? Copying my song already? <laughs> I'm writing it all down. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Terry a Gibbs. <laughs> Terry, we're so happy that you can join us. Um, by the way, heck, you are how old right now? Well, I'm about seven months. I'm 86. I have seven months away from being 100. A hundred. You, you, you figure it out then. So I can't I, add that all that much. So I hear when you reach a hundred, that's when you're going to join the Olympics? Or was I hearing that right? Well, I, I, I tend to go back on the road. <laughs> I, I, I booked a 30-second two, a two, a tour. Mm. But Terry... Please give them, give the audience a sense of your history. I mean, stuff that you've done, uh, you know, on television as well as your own things. Just Roger, brief... we don't have enough time for that. It's very exciting to hear it. <laughs> but I've been a blessed human being to everywhere. There was a time where I had that little band with Terry Pollard, and we spent 50 weeks a year on the road. Wow. So for four years we did this. Frank DeVito just passed away, unfortunately. Put I, uh, our itiner one time on Facebook, and I looked at it myself, and I felt like I was going to pass out, thinking we were doing all that driving, going from club to club every week, two weeks, and one week, and three weeks, you know? But you know some larger? I never had so much fun in my life being on stage. Be being on stage for me was the greatest thing that ever happened. That's where I had my most fun in life. Yeah, that is that's very true for all of us. You know where we, where By the we. Way, I, 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 you never called me because I, I I went and had to turn it on myself. I came on just when the first girl played vibe. She was missing, but she was ending. She... And, and everything sounded so really great. Oh yeah, we were trying to get a woman on the stage forever, and so now, now we've now created a routine that hopefully you know other. That I, I had three girl piano players in my band that were really as good as any guy. Terry Pollard, I'm going back to 1953, took Horace Silas place in my band and played just as good as Horace. And then there was a girl called Pat Moran who really could play. And that good, she was me and Peter took me to one of the best. And then Alice Coltrane. And, and you, you couldn't beat those three girl piano players. Wow, I didn't I didn't realize that Alice uh, played with you, Terry. Wow. Oh, yeah, I was a matchmaker on that marriage. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I introduced John to, to Alice when she worked in my band. She was my band for a whole year. Wow, I, I didn't realize that, man. You should get a royalties check. <laughs> I do it once in a while. <laughs> it, it, it says thank you very much. Oh, thank you, Terry. I mean, it's really an honor to have you uh, in on this. I mean, every year we've done this. I mean, uh, it's just... Roger, this is a great thing you're doing, really. And, I, and I, the funniest thing, I have never seen that many vibrators I've never heard before. Oh, it can happen. <laughs> well, it just happened. It's, it's, it's happening right now. <laughs> Well, Terry, thank you very much. Uh, you know, the least I can do for you is send you a a um, 
a, a supply of food from Katz's Deli in New York. Yeah, that's the best deli in the world. You scared me last time you said that to me. <laughs> and you know what? I ate it all up. Well, we're going to airlift you another another one of those uh, things. I got a C-130 that is ready to fly uh, over. I want to say one thing more, Roger. That song you wrote is really a beautiful song. You know, you know I've written over 200 songs, and, and I've had some very uh, good luck to have people like Nancy and Cole and Cannibal and the George Sherry, a whole bunch of people record my songs. But, but, but that's the kind of songs I write, a melodic song. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Something to sing while you're in the shower. <laughs> By the way, I'm talking to you from the shower right uh -oh. now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't waste no time. When you're 99, you gotta do. You gotta multitask. You know. Well, you're 99, <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Do anything you want to do, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta understand, I'm 99 with a man of a body of 98. <laughs> I still have the body of a man 98, so I'm. Well, one thing, one thing before we go away, Terry, I want everybody to know that you are also. A podcaster so on Facebook you can hear you know what Terry is talking about what's on his mind and uh, well every Saturday Rod you wonder is I, I do questions and answers because I'm the only one alive of that era yeah especially the people up there the, the, exactly the bands that, that era I can answer these questions the only one next to me who's uh, six months younger is Roy Hayes and I don't think he's in good condition, which is a drag. Oh, sorry to hear that. And, and so, but, but I have, you know, seriously, uh, my legs not may not be as good, but my brain still runs away with each other. So uh, I love answering questions of, uh, who, of people who ask the questions, you know, and have fun on the air, anyhow. I do it on Facebook every Saturday at 1 o'clock uh, uh, California time. Well, Terry, we look forward to hearing that on Saturdays, and also I look forward to you giving us some critiques on our next Beware the Vibes of March. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, I, 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 let me tell you something. I don't believe you. Every four bars, you're picking up another instrument. Well, that's the hardest thing to get. You know, when they start booing, you know, I just tried another one. Well, what do you think about this one? And <laughs> that didn't work you know, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it, well, four bars, your left hand goes down, picks up the other. And four bars, lady, your right hand has something. <laughs> wait till and I put something in your mouth, blowing a horn. <laughs> Just wait till I put the symbols between my knees. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that part. Yet. <laughs> I don't want to see it either. <laughs> I don't think you. I don't think your wife wants to see that either. <laughs> With a bass drum on my back. Anyway, <laughs> Terry. Well, Rod, you listen, it, 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 whatever you have hearing right now is great to hear five players coming out. Yes. And and, uh, and, and, and seeing who they're and, and the idols or who they like, like Gary Burton and, and Mike Mary Jr., because these are all my friends, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they learn, we all learn from you, man. You know, it's like... Uh, on the uh, shoulders of giants, you know, that that have inspired us throughout the years to want to play, and hopefully we're inspiring the next generation, and they're able to well, hear you. Well, it looks like you guys are you're doing it right now. I hope. You know, people hearing you watching the show and, or, and in the audience who play by it would like to be on, on your next, what do you do next year? Yeah, sure. yeah. Well, uh, I, I hope so. I hope so. You know, the main thing is that no one's throwing anything at us, so I guess we're doing okay. But well, Terry, I would if I was there, but I'm not there. But, but seriously, <laughs> let's tell seriously, you guys are all, all sounding real good. It's really very, very good. The whole rhythm section is great, and, and that Conga Drummer, she's doing what she has to do. And all the people who come up and play, pick what they want to play, and they sound good. Well, thank you, Terry. I'm, I'm going to end this because I'm sure the water's getting cold in the shower. <laughs> and well, I, I, 
thing is, no water going. I just stand in the shower. <laughs> It's a fun place to hang out. Hey, anyway, Roger, I love you. Gordon, you guys have fun. We love you too, Terry. And, and, and we'll talk again when you get done. Roger. For sure. Terry Gibbs, ladies and gentlemen. Terry Gibbs. Everybody take care. We are running a little behind, so I think we'll just conclude right there, and uh, we will take a break, and we will come back for our second set. So I hope you, you're enjoying yourselves. Thank you. We'll see you again soon. <laughs>